What's up, everybody? This is Jay, and this is my review for the Shy Season 3, Episode 10, A Couple, Two, or Three. Now, this is the season finale for the Shy Season 3. The season started off with a a uh, wedding and then a funeral and it's going to end with a funeral and then a wedding so that's crazy it's been an up and down season and it was had its moments now if you're new to the channel what i'm gonna do is recap the episode at the end i'm gonna give you my real talk review of what i thought and my opinions and then finally i'm gonna give it a mosco and it's four categories i'm gonna judge it on with a total of 100 points let's see what it comes up with let's get into it now, when it starts off, we see Mahalia Jackson over here singing the blues, and it's at Ronnie's funeral. We see Jada crying because she almost got a little bit of that OE up in at one time. We see that uh, Dre still got a little frown on her face. I don't know why. We see Papa and Jake. Everybody's sad. Tracy's sad. Got a little water in her eyes. She should be sad. And we see that Big Papa's got a little ceremony for Ronnie. Talking about what Ronnie did. And we see a flashback that Ronnie actually actually came out the house with Keisha and gave her a hug and tried to help her and support her. We never saw that when she was rescued, but we saw it now that Ronnie, he actually came out the house. And so we see that he actually got uh, some military honors and a flag was presented to Tracy. His boys got up. Hey, we miss you, G. Love you, boy. And I wonder if they're going to try to get revenge. Also, Tracy got up. She was crying, said she's sorry. And then Keisha come and and she's back looking cute again which is good and then she comes and put the flowers down for Ronnie and you could tell that she really had appreciation for that man and then we see that they go into the burial and people trying to chill Emmett is selfish talking about why he get killed in front of my place on grand opening he over here talking to Keisha and he say what's up she say I'm pregnant he like oh damn well at least it's the first time it ain't mine shoot and it wasn't a time for jokes and she clearly let him know that i mean this ain't a joke because she didn't want it to be hers either meanwhile jake and pop for papa talking jake talking about i know plenty of people want him killed and kev like he saved my sister he say that don't make him no saint papa says saint ain't nothing but a sinner that got up then you know i smell bacon sure enough they up here locking up past the cavassier he said what is this this ain't nothing but the devil huh, what is this this is a misunderstanding y'all and then everybody looking shook. They didn't never thought Papa's daddy get locked up. Next thing you know, Sister Soldier over here giving marriage counseling to Emmett and Tiff. And they all geeked up talking about, it's been time, yeah. And so she like, who y'all trying to convince? Me or yourselves? And so she say, what are y'all talking about? And pretty much they are showing they don't, they ain't ready for this relationship. But they still gonna rush into it. Uh, Emmett still ain't responsible. He forgetting to make certain appointments. Sister Soldier, they trying to get her approval she like y'all don't need my approval tiff like you know what you right about that let's go baby and so they end up leaving and pretty much they ain't ready but they going forward anyway we see Gemma still trying to be cool with kev papa stressing out talking about if my daddy locked up that mean i gotta be the head of the household and i gotta take care of my isha this is too much stress they say man you tripping man hit this and he say man y'all already criminals let me hear if i hit this and he took it and he started smoking he like and he start coughing. I ain't never smoked before. Only thing I ever smoked was sausage. Now if the if God come, I won't be ready. Next thing you know, we see that Duda and Gemma's daddy then met up, and he like, hey, look, Pastor Cavassier then got locked up, man. And Duda like, what? He say, hey, man, you know he don't want no time. He about to sing like a canary. And so next thing you know, we see that. Uh, Jada is talking with Keisha and she's telling her about her experience of having a child at a young age and Keisha's trying to find out should she get an abortion or not and we see that Trig is trying to get dressed up and him and Imani is talking about why Duda ain't got in trouble from Camille yet and they don't know and he just nervous as hell but he trying to keep it together for this appointment meanwhile we see that Keisha is talking with uh Emmett's woman Tiff 
because Jada said, here's somebody you need to talk to. And here's when we finally realized that a lot of people had questions about what happened to the baby that she had. And she explains that she had did some soul searching and decided that they weren't ready for another baby and they had an abortion. Unfortunately for us as fans, it took to the 10th episode to find out. Nevertheless, we see that the boys is over there working at the pizza joint and we see that Jake talking about he gonna quit because he about to leave and they like man you can't quit next thing you know Pastor Cavassier roll up let me talk to you for a minute son he said what's up dad hey look that was nothing but a misunderstanding okay he said yeah well I'm just saying what happened uh, I'm just saying son it ain't ready for you I, you a boy hey, I ain't gonna be a boy forever I'm already big enough to be a man meanwhile we see over at Camille's office she over here talking next thing you know Rose come in and she like why you ain't use the file she say hold on so she get off the phone she say look I thought about it but then I realized I want to win but I don't want to win that way she say why not because you I'm trying to help you she said no nah, you trying to help yourself you mad at him he ain't treating you right and you want me to do it because you still need him in your pocket I understand but I ain't no pawn so you know you look good I like the red lip but I ain't about to do that so I'm gonna beat him my way later boo meanwhile we see Emmett he g'd up he happy he like oh look at him and so he feeling good Donnell and hooked him and Tiff up with little outfits Jada throwing salt every time she can talking about don't worry about the outfit worry about being a good husband Tiff's trying to get us stuff together Jada then gave us some dirty earrings talking about here goes something borrowed she like okay and uh, that dress looked like it's too big but nevertheless she still look good and she talking about you know um, I'm glad that you marrying Emmett and she said yeah I know I'm the only one put up with his ass and so Jada kind of preparing her but at the same time not really letting the beans spill meanwhile Emmett is putting on the clothes he's like man where you buy all this from he said oh I got a hookup don't worry about it next thing you know he realized that this stuff still got the damn tags on it the sensors and he like man you stole this no it's just borrowed man come on man what you doing so he tell her Tiff we can't wear this she like man are you crazy we only wear it at one time i don't care and so he look at darnell and he like you know what i knew i always liked her knowing he a damn lie meanwhile we see the they inside the elevator going to the appointment and he asked jake if he was nervous he said no nah. then he like well i am jake said me too hey no matter what we we always family and imani is just smiling at their little union meanwhile we see the bachelorette party and tiff come out in a little sexy little lingerie fishnet black pantyhose and i mean she come out killing the game right there boy just putting a little striker pose go ahead and got that rump roast on the menu i mean everybody having a good time jada throwing the party and all the girls is there and they start doing a little uh questions and games of what the grooms say and uh they say where the first date she said we supposed to go to cheesecake factory but he was broke so we went to white castle she like he said cheesecake factory what how he gonna say that we didn't even go and pretty much all the questions they had was wrong other than he loved her booty which it's kind of sad because she should have more than a big booty for him to be loving. But nevertheless, we see that Jake, he's sitting up in the you know court and he's telling him he want to live with his brother because they family. And he said, no, Mr. Perry ain't did me wrong, but, you know, I want to be with my brother. And Rose is looking a little salty because dude i didn't show up and she said you know it must be some mistake but you know the judge said well he ain't here so he forced my hand and i'm a grant custody so now they together later we see back at the uh pizza joint that papa he's sitting there wondering what's going on stressing next thing you know maisha come in he like how you know i was here he like i love you guys and so she like come on let me talk to you so they next thing you know she putting the chain around his neck she like yeah now we go public he like wow i'm somebody's bitch now meanwhile we see he's sitting there talking to her and she like look your dad he got made it your business when he got arrested at ronnie funeral you need to talk to him so we see later that on um 
that Emmett is going to his bachelor party with his dad. He thinking it was cool because he blindfolded. Next thing you know, it ain't nothing but big man meat walking around. He like, where my boys? Where the strippers? Oh, man, I ain't got their numbers and the strippers too expensive. Hey, man, look, this going to, you enjoy this. This is the last piece and quiet your ass going to get. Meanwhile, we see Tiff. She hit with her girls. They smoking or whatever, chilling. Next thing you know, they hear a big bang at the door. It's the police. They run over there. They're like, hey, I hear some noise complaint. I'm going to have to punish you. She like, punish me? What you talking about? Yeah, you, you, yeah, I'm going to have to punish you. Next thing you know, Jada, like you said, you don't like male strippers. And then they got this woman in here stripping. But she not a woman stripper. She's doing male stripper dances and moves. So if you don't like a male stripper, why you got her doing the landing without no landing pad and uh you know no kickstand to stick stick the landing and then rolled her up like a roly poly and stuff. So I don't know. I guess she liked male stripper dance with a woman doing it. I don't know. Meanwhile we see that they uh Emmett and his pops is getting ready. He telling them to get a prenup. He like I ain't getting no prenup. He say look you may be broke now, but you ain't going to be broke forever. You need to get a prenup. And he like, man, anything I get, she deserve half. He say, man, you crazy? Hey, look, she going to hate you one day. You need to get that together, save your money. Besides, I'm going to need you to take care of me one day. And so they sit there getting ready. And he say, hey, look, this couple's massage. She say, couple's massage? Man, what is this? I can't be next to you with no couple's massage while you sitting here trying to talk your way into a happy ending and the women is looking he like hey look man we only get the deal if it's couples so we couples say look man i'm out of here man i'm gone man he say well i guess y'all just gonna have to both work on me yeah yeah i wonder how that turned out for old d meanwhile we see emmett he come home early and of course tiff is on that couch that's that's the spot boy and he likes she's why you home early i miss my wife soon to be wife yeah baby i love you and then they just start kissing and smooching and getting it together about to put another stain on the couch meanwhile we see on the other side of town that uh camille is giving a you know the speech about concessions that she's not going to be the mayor and thanking her crew and on the other side of town Duda is by himself with Rose and he's the winner normally the winner is giving an acceptance speech and in front of a crowd but he's sipping on a little oil in private talking about now I can own both brothers and that he had missed that appointment on purpose later we see Keisha in the doctor's room thinking about getting uh you know going to the chop shop and next then you know she decides she can't do it and tell her mama she like what you sure she say i can't do it what if ronnie mama had an abortion what would have happened to me and so now she's starting to think a little bit about it and she decided she ain't gonna have that abortion so while they sitting out mama talking about you sure i'm gonna support you no matter what and she like yeah i mean i just if that would have happened who knows what could have happened to me you know and so she got a point there but who knows so kev come home and here they talking in the background and emotional so he like what's going on and they like uh Kev, it's okay. And then she say, Kev, I'm pregnant. And he like, what? Yeah, you ain't pregnant by that crazy dude. I know you ain't keeping it. You gotta be crazy. And she they like, Kev, you need to calm. And he upset because he know that the whispers and everything that people say, they gonna say that your sister wanted that. Meanwhile, we see that Jake is sitting there chilling with Imani and he say, Man, what's manslaughter? And he say, Well, I tried, I killed somebody, but it wasn't on purpose. He said, who you kill? My dad. My dad wanted the little boy. He said, oh, okay, I know what you is. He said, what? He said, yeah, you was something that was born one thing, and you wanted to be another thing. Oh, I like that. I don't give a fuck. And so that was cool when he didn't care about 
what was going on when he was saying that. Meanwhile, we see Papa Soul searching at the church, trying to see what he gonna do, trying to understand what's going on. And then he come home and his pops there. Dad, what what would you do with that money from Camille? Look, son, I'm not a bad man. I'm just an un ambitious man, son. I want to give you the world. Do you know how much seconds and thirds cost on your plate, son? Meanwhile, we see that Jake then got up and left his plate there. Imani like, you need to pick this up. He like, oh. So that's how this shit gonna be? Uh, you better watch your mouth. Oh, okay, so I mean, what, you gonna boss me around? Look, I'm not gonna boss you around. I already had a stepmom that was bad. I'm just saying, I'm not gonna clean up after you. You clean up after yourself. And so, later we see Kev and Gemma talking, and she over here trying to get him to open up about his problems, but he ain't trying to, so she shared with him that she was stressing and thought about committing suicide, and now she got some type of uh, counselor, and he want, she told him that she won't Kev to be the first, so they didn't knock boots. It only took about 2.2 seconds, so he was like, is that how it always go? Meanwhile, we see that Tiff is getting ready, Jada getting her hair done, they all all getting excited she telling Emmett always act as if she there with you we see Kev and Gemma show up to be there for support for Emmett meanwhile we see the trig is laid up with the uh, Imani rubbing them size 13s and then he get a knock at the door and no less is Duda coming in with his coat on his shoulders like he count Dracula vampire in Brooklyn and he said <laughs> god damn me he say man don't you know I missed that appointment on purpose he say oh man what he say uh but I I ain't got no hard feelings and he say man i do you tried to kill me dude i he say don't you know if i wanted you dead you'd be dead and so that shut him up he say look i want to continue to pay for jake's school and this ain't a handout now that i got this new position you're gonna run the streets and they basically made a deal because what else could trig do but make that deal but imani was looking pissed but he had no choice meanwhile we see Emmett and Tiff they getting married they going through the motions he's happy excited they both are they uh go through the vows they exchange rings and everything and they pretty much do the damn thing and they actually tie the knot officially in front of their friends and family he was geeked to show the ring off and everything even though Darnell and Jada both kind of had their little mouth turned a little bit to the side while they was going through it they didn't open up their mouth or say nothing now they coming to honeymoon back to the love couch time for a new stain of marriage and now they about to break that couch in a whole new level now meanwhile we see papa then gave maisha a pee so now they then got each other chains they falling in love we see jake and he bonding with imani with the hair trig having little water fights you know flicking water splashing each other we see nina and dre smoking chilling falling back in love with one another and everything uh keisha she's still stressing but it seems that she made a conscious decision you know what i'm gonna get up and take control of my life she stopped looking kind of ugly like she was she got back looking cute got on her little running shoes and she looking good again and it seemed like she gonna try to take control of her life and she was off running forward towards her future now it's time for real talk as far as this episode went for the shy it was okay but it didn't seem like a season finale it actually felt like um half finale and half just a regular episode now episode nine felt more like a finale probably because how it ended and we lost a main character um i think that they could have probably combined maybe a little bit of ronnie dying and made that the last episode and maybe a lot of this that we saw in this we could have just saw in season four maybe and maybe tie a few things together um but in the end um i think it was a decent episode i'm gonna give it a more score at the end but um i think that uh it's kind of unfortunate how ronnie went out and he really has nobody left now and uh tracy i think 
I would like to see is she go on how she's going to deal with that. Um, his boys came. I'd love to know if they were going to get revenge and start looking for him. Ronnie's revenge. Hey, I had two boys. They ride or die, and they coming for me, boy. Um, it's interesting that uh, Emmett is rushing into this marriage knowing damn well he ain't ready. Why are they getting married but still living on that couch? That ain't even a let-out couch. Y'all need to get a let-out couch at least before you get married. I mean, that's a bright orange neon couch. I know it's a couple dark neon spots on them seats, if you know what I mean. I know they didn't broke in the springs. You probably fall in that damn couch like a pit hole or some black hole. Nevertheless, they need to at least get something better than that trying to get married and you can't even get up off the couch. I think that's kind of messed up. And, uh... I don't know what's up with Keisha. I understand maybe not wanting to have an abortion and take a life. But as far as her keeping the baby, I think that would be more difficult for her than she probably realized. And I can see adoption as an option. And as far as Papa, what's up with him questioning his life and all of this and stuff over what his dad did? It wasn't like it was that serious and it was over money. He doesn't understand. And I just hope that things work out for the little brother better. I mean, he already already getting uh played by Maisha in a sense I'm not saying that she's doing him wrong but she's like the man in the relationship almost running him and uh I'm wondering what's up with Trig now some people say that was bad for Trig to take that deal but what else would he do how is he gonna pay his bills I mean for real does Trig look like he got a high school or a college education I mean where is he gonna work at Walmart how is he gonna take care of them and pay these bills he was eventually gonna go to the streets so the best option for him would be to work with dude i have some rank make some money like dude i said teach you how to lead i mean he a street negro what else he gonna do he ain't about to be a, a greeter at Walmart. He ain't going to start working at CVS. And, of course, he the type of person that would complain that it wouldn't be enough money anyway. And so we'll see what's up. And lastly, what's up with that damn bachelorette party? I don't understand. If you are a woman and you don't like male strippers, then you would want a female stripper. Okay, the female strippers do different things. They put stuff in places, pop stuff out of places. And they do a lot of other tricks, you know, disappearing acts if you know what i mean and they whole act and dance is totally different than what a male stripper would do this stripper came in although was a female was male presenting if i'm saying that right and danced like a male and acted like a male so what was the point of that and i've asked plenty of ladies if you're straight would you want a male stripper or not and they saying, Jada saying, well, I know you don't like male strippers. Why does she not like male strippers? But she like males to massage shit and then, you know, blow backs out. But you don't want them to dance? I don't get it. Anyway, everybody else, all her friends don't like male strippers either. Jada don't like male strippers either because she was enjoying and having a great time. I don't know. I thought that was kind of not natural i thought that was kind of put into the episode and it didn't exactly fit and that's kind of the problems that a lot of people have with the shy is a lot of things are in the episodes that don't always fit um now does that mean that it wasn't entertaining no but does it fit the story no and lastly what's up with darnell that boy cheap to his heart he don't take that bluetooth out for nothing you understand me i ain't missing a call you understand i don't know who may call uh but nevertheless dude don't play all right that ain't going nowhere and so um it'll be interesting to see jake um he did had a conversation with imani finally about the transgender although he made it seem like it was no big deal i don't like how they explained it you was born one thing and you wanted to be another thing why he just didn't say you was born a man and you want to be a woman why did they make it seem like it was like nothing you were born one thing and you want to be another thing um if i called a transgender person you born a thing you just want to be another thing they would be all over me saying i'm homophobic and stuff but it was no big deal there when it was trying to downplay the situation so i don't know i think that that's you know unfortunate but nevertheless i'd rather it had been real and honest and then we deal with it that way 
And if he said it was no big deal that way, then that's what it is. But anyway, we'll see how it works. I hope there's a season four because I think that they can do something with the kids. They're getting older. Let's see what's up with Papa. I think he might be the notorious Big Papa. He's smoking. Now, if God come, I won't be ready. I mean, he's a mess. And I wonder how that's going to all play out for him in the future. Now, it's time for me to give this episode a Mosco. Okay, now, this is new and I'm going to score everything I review from now on. It's going to be four simple categories. Each category equals 25 points. You get up to 100 points. Category one, the visuals and cinematography. Now, they're not using cheap cameras, but they're not using the best state-of-the-art cameras. They're using good 4K cameras. It looks good. The cinematography of the episode is great. I love to see the shots of the shy, shots of the city. They had one great picture of the city with like a purple haze to it. And I think the cinematography and visuals were great for this episode. And I'll give it a score of a 20. Now, Let's go to storyline and plot. Here's the problem I have with the show and where most people have a problem. The storyline is decent and the plot is decent, but it's too many holes. It's too many things that are left unfinished and it's a lot of reasons why. So I won't say that it's due to incompetence. I'm not saying that it's not either, but whatever the case may be, the storyline I will give a score of a 12 okay is halfway there if they plug up some of the holes and things it could be a complete story and a home run third category is special effects slash makeup now the shy is not an special effects driven show but they do use makeup and costumes and for those who don't know, Ronnie does not have a beard. That is makeup. They apply that for him as part of his costume. Um, the way that they dress, the way that they look, um, it looks like real people in the city. A lot of the people dress and the makeup and things is good. I will give that for this show uh, a score of 18, okay? You can't get a full score because they don't have a full range of things to do. Next up, is last but not least entertainment and fun factor now the shy is entertaining to if you watch it and you're able to not pay attention to the storyline and some of the other things that may bother you it is an entertaining story and it does have moments where it's fun to watch now it's not consistently entertaining and fun it does have moments where it kind of can get a little meh. so for that i give the shy a score of 16 okay which brings it all to a total score of 66 this is the first episode first movie i ever reviewed and as time goes on i will post comparison charts of different episodes and different movies I reviewed so when I do give a new review you can compare it to similar scores in the meantime I appreciate you thanks for watching and last but not least I got a special message from Reg from the shy check it out yo 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 Chicago's on Jay Moore what's popping man I appreciate the love and support man Everybody y'all subscribe to Jay Moore's channel. He, you know, he's um, been a proud supporter of the Shy, myself. Um, and you know, just tee his page up, tee his channel up, show him some love, you know, and I appreciate the love, man. You know, keep going. See you at the top.